Hey there, it's Aaron. It is uh, June 16th, 2015, and it's a little after 11.30 right now uh, in the morning. And yeah, it's been a while since I've uploaded a video. Uh, you may see later on my channel if you're a fan of the show Community. I just recorded a video about uh, a review of Season 6, since I did it with the first five seasons of Community. So that should be up in the near future. I don't know if that's going to be up first or if this is going to be up first. But I felt like recording this, and I tried to already, but I accidentally deleted it. So, um, yeah, I'm going to try this again, and as you can tell by the title, this is going to be a summary of what I've been up to uh, in terms of musical purchases. Uh, since the last video I uploaded, which was a little tribute to, uh, or two-part tribute to uh, Pete Ham uh, and the 40th anniversary of his uh, passing, uh, around that time, towards the end of April, uh, my mom sort of inspired me to, uh, or convinced me, rather, and just said, Hey, you know what? You're stuck at this job at CVS. Why don't you do something that you're looking forward to? Why don't you sell vinyl? You know, there's going to be a lot of garage sales. You can probably get them for cheap. Be a good way to make money. So I thought, okay, I'll do it. So, uh, I do have an eBay, uh, business, uh, con records uh that's what i've been doing i've been going to uh yard sales uh with the help of, if they're too far away my mom and i will go together and then um i'll go to some myself if they're not too far and then uh, i'll go over to the uh, local record store here uh tunes and see if they have anything in their one dollar section or if there's something really good in their uh priced vintage records the ones that go over one dollar uh i'll pick them up too. Now, with going over to Tunes and all these yard sales, I've been finding a few things myself. Some things I want to keep, which is not good for me because, uh, hello, I'm trying to be selling this stuff, but there are just so many things that are too good to pass up. So uh, I'm going to be making a video of those. I'm going to go uh, in alphabetical order. I've recently uh, arranged all my crates uh, by alphabetical order. I got three crates over there and there's one right next to it i mean you've seen the video there's one over there there right over there and then there's a bookshelf right over here and i put uh i emptied out all the books put them in the basement made my own little library in the basement and uh put two rows of records there and uh yeah that's what it's been and then i alphabetized them for this video, I'm going to be going through the first crate, which goes from A to F. So, there is a, there's a couple here. Alright. First up, Aerosmith, Toys in the Attic. This is from a yard sale. Uh, it says $4 on here, but the guy that was selling the records uh, said that everything was half price. So that was pretty cool. But I later went up to him and I said, would you take $5? I can't remember how much. And uh, he was very nice and he said, yeah, sure. So, um... Yeah, I actually got this for probably, a, a, I don't know, a couple of cents in the end. So, Million Dollar Babies, Battle Axe. Uh, this might sound familiar. There's a reason why. Uh, this is an album that was made by uh, the members in the Alice Cooper Band. Now, for those of you unaware, Alice Cooper was the name of a band uh, from 1969 to around 1974. Uh, consisting of a singer named Alice Cooper, originally named Vincent Fernier, and then these other four guys, Dennis Dunway, Michael Bruce, Glenn Buxton, and Neil Smith. Now, when they broke up, Alice decided to take the Alice Cooper name for himself as a solo artist, which he still does. But uh, sometime, I, does it say the year here? 1977, 1978? Uh, Three of the guys from the original Alice Cooper band decided to form their own group, and obviously they couldn't call themselves Alice Cooper, so they named themselves after one of their albums and songs, Billion Dollar Babies. And the album's name is Battle Axe. This is the only album they ever released. Uh, I found this at a churchyard sale. Uh, it's a promotional copy, so you can see here. And uh, it sounds really good. It's a good album. Um, there's a few catchy songs on here. There's this picture here. Uh, the guys that were in the Alice Cooper band, Michael Bruce, Dennis Dunway, Neil Smith, those are the only three guys, and then they got two other ones. Glenn Buxton, don't know what he was up to, but uh, 
Piernowski Perfeño, now that Glenn Buck's you know, passed away in 1997, but this was before he, long before he passed away. But um, this is a pretty good album. Uh, nice to have. Uh, with the Toys in the Attic one, I got this one too. Black Sabbath, Paranoid. Oh, one of my all-time favorites. I think this is, last time I, I think it's my number 11 favorite album. So short of the top 10. So I love this record. Love it, love it, love it. However, uh, the record's warped. Now, my record player, the Audio Technicia here, uh, it can play warped records, but that's only if it's like uneven on one side. And then it can, since it, I think because it's belt driven, it can conform to the shape and not skip. But when the grooves are warped within or seeped in into the record, that's when it's going to start skipping over and over. So that's what happened with uh, this copy. And I was so disappointed because it's really hard to find. Uh, because I think Sabbath on vinyl tends to be pr a bit pricey. And the guy was offering this, uh, I think, for three bucks. Well, half price. I got it for like a buck. And that's what it's actually worth because the record is warped. So I went on Discogs and got a copy that did not have uh, the cover. So I put it in the back here. And this one is slightly better. This is a 19... It says 83 on here. But uh, whatever it is, it's a uh, repressing of the album on NEMs or NIMS uh, label. Sounds pretty good. I mean, it's good to have the album on vinyl. Uh, two copies here. George Carlin, uh, FM and AM. This one was found at the same churchyard sale that uh, I found the Billion Dollar Babies one at. And this one is scratched. Ugh, it was such... I have a USB turntable. I had to keep editing all the skips out. It was impossible. It was just... Ugh. But I ended up getting it done. But, uh, yeah, I got this. And this one is a uh, better looking copy. And it still has the shrink wrap on it. I mean, there's still an opening. I mean, it's been opened, but the shrink wrap's still on there. And, uh... I think this one, I haven't played this one actually, so I may retransfer it just because this one might be in better condition. So, uh, and it's a fun, it's a great album. I even heard this album before I got it. Uh, I heard it on YouTube. And uh, yeah, he was a funny guy, George Carlin. Really funny. Good album. This in Class Clown, I heard. So, uh, yeah. Uh, another one I uh, got with the one from the Churchyard Sale. Uh, Toledo window box. Uh, this one I have not listened to yet, so I can't give you my opinion. All right, with the Sabbath and the Aerosmith, Cheap Trick at Budokan, uh, classic live album. Uh, yeah, this was a pretty big. This was pretty big with back back in the day, uh, from what I know. Uh, my only problem with this album is that it doesn't feel complete, and the reason why it's not complete is because it's not the whole concert, it's a single album. However, in later years, they have released the entire concert, so I may want to pick that up. Okay. Alice Cooper, Billion Dollar Babies. Uh, this was found at a churchyard sale, not the same one I got the George Carlin at, but uh, this one, uh, this guy was about the clothes shop, and uh, he took about three or five bucks for all the records I took. Uh, this has the uh, wallet uh, snakeskin thing going on. Uh, the record uh, does have a lot of surface noise on here, even after I used the spin clean on it. So uh, I may want to get this again, but nevertheless, it is the album on vinyl. So it's good to have. And then the last in that crate right over there, uh, Brampton Comes Alive. Pretty good condition. I can't remember where I. Oh wait, I remember where I got this. I think this was one found that I found one. I keep finding copies of this because it was a big album. <laughs> I found one I think over at Tunes, and then uh, 
or it may have not been a tunes. I found one somewhere. Then I found this at one yard sale, and then I found another copy at another yard sale. So I sold one copy, but I decided to get one for myself because, uh, I mean, it's a classic. I do think that uh, the band that he was in before, uh, Humble Pie, they made a much better live album, uh, Performance Rock in the Fillmore. And that was the album that he left. I think he left at, he was on that album, but he left b before it was, or before it was released. Just so he could uh, have a solo career and, uh, yeah, so it makes me think differently of this album, but, you know, nevertheless, it is a classic, so Brandon comes alive. So yeah, that's it for that crate, and I'll go on to the next one.